Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today is the 21st of November and I'm heading to St George's Hospital in Tooting for my meeting with my new doctors, the new team basically. And they're going to tell me or discuss with me about what the next steps are. Because obviously I've had two fibroid resections in Worthing Hospital that are total fails. So now we have to find another way to get this fibroid out. Unfortunately, Paul is meant to be taking me, but he's got COVID. So I'm going to be going with David. So we'll be leaving here about 10 past, well, quarter past, let's just say. Quarter past 12. At the moment, it is 11. I've just got my bags ready and I'm just getting my coat. I'm hoping to get some good news today. I'm hoping to leave feeling like I'm on the right path because I actually feel like this has just been a very stressful process. I'll show you guys when I get to St George's Hospital. I'll see you guys in just a little while. So guys, we are at St George's Hospital, Tooting. I've just checked in. Um, came a bit early because I have no clue what's going on. Um, nice coffee. So David's just gone to the loo. I'm sorry if you can't hear me, so I might have to do a voiceover on this one. So we're just waiting. Checked in. Still waiting. Okay, for more support because sometimes I've had a couple of consultants, my previous, not Dr. Mafia, the one before him, mm. and he was quite. How can I put it? Rude or gaslighting? He was a bit like, "You've got two kids, so it doesn't matter if you lose your womb." So I went a bit. But it's your body. So you exactly, I got decide. so mad and I yeah, shut we don't off. Have any of that <laughs> Thank you. So I was like, <laughs> I at least see that one. if I have someone listening while I shut off, it's that kind of thing. Sorry that you had that experience. It was it was horrible. He was the first person I met, and it was just a very horrible experience. Then Dr. Max Roy took over after I explained everything. And he's tried to do his best, so. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, let me get everything here because it's, uh, it's a miracle we've got the other letter on record. Sometimes we can't even access that. Are we? Oh, really? So, <laughs> okay, well. Let's This is your first time seeing us? Yes. Okay. Where are you based? Sure, I'm by sea. Near Brighton. Yeah, near Brighton. Yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> Yeah, near Brighton. How long has it taken you to get here today? About an hour and 30? I don't know if it's It's the car park situation, yes. Car park, yeah, I'm yes. now. Really? That was good for you. Yeah, I know. But not in the rain. That was no, today. Was today <laughs> was. How long has it been going on? How long have you been beginning? Okay, so in June of 2021, I went and had a private scan mm. and they found a mass. The lady couldn't confirm what private. it was. Transvaginal, internal. Yes, internal. Yeah, internal. 2021. Yes. And then she found a mass and she couldn't confirm what it was, but she said it looks like a fibroid to me. And I was like, well, that's weird. You know, yes. I've never known to have fibroids. Never. No, never. Because they would have scanned you before you did your yes. MBA. Yeah. And it wasn't there. And I having the scan, they, I took it to my GP, they forwarded it onto Worthing Hospital. Mm -hmm. What is the fibroid that he said? He said it's, he called it a sudden mucosal fibroid. Yeah. Sudden. yeah, and it's basically just blocking the tubes. Then, then he did, um, did yes, I was put to sleep and he resected, he said half of it, but there was a lot of bleeding and my blood pressure dropped, so I had to spend a night in hospital. And then he said, okay. So they put me a norepisterone tablets for 10. The norepisterone, how often did you take I was taking it three times a day. Um, for 10 weeks. 5 milligrams? Yeah. Five. So on the 9th of August I went in for the one again, put me to sleep for him to reset the rest. But he said there was too much bleeding, the fibroid had grown to a point where he said it had covered the cavity of the womb. So he couldn't resect it safely without obviously hemorrhaging and causing me to have a hysterectomy. And that is the safest route is to stop the surgery. So they stopped the surgery, I went home, and that's when he sent a referral here. 
I'd been having extreme bleeding to a point where I became severely anemic. My levels were two. And I had to have you? my ferritin levels were two. So I had to have an eye infusion on the 9th of uh, 9th of August. August. No, no, just recently. Last just mm. November, 9th of November, I had to have a. What was your hemoglobin? You know? Have it on here actually. So just waiting for the doctor to get back with the consultant, and they make a plan, and then they're going to come talk to me. Just giving a bit of history at the moment. So now the hard stuff begins. Yeah. We go in and we remove all of the fibroids that we can see and it's safe for us to remove. Um, sometimes when we do that, so if you imagine you've got your uterus here and then you've got the lining of the womb like that, yeah. um, when we're getting the fibroid we can cut into the lining of the womb. If we do that, the only thing that changes is we tell someone they need to have a cesarean section. But in someone who's had two cesarean sections, if you were to have a third baby, we would be recommending a cesarean section anyway. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's fine. His reasoning, he thinks, why that is the best option for you is that if we do something in the keyhole, we not, might not be able to get other fibroids out, we might be able to get one or two, yeah. and these fibroids are going to continue growing. We want to give you the best possible chance of getting as many of the fibroids, mm -hmm. and then giving you the best possible chance of getting pregnant after that. Okay. Um, having it open and doing it, having it open like this, yeah. is technically more risky than a keyhole one, but we think that's what we need in order okay. to get this. He doesn't want to try for another hysteroscopy because he's tried that multiple times and we don't think that's going to change you. anything and that's why you've been referred here so we can yeah. do something about Thank it. You. Yeah. What would be helpful is I'm going to write a letter and that will go to your GP in the next couple of weeks and I'm going to advise that you definitely get that second um, iron infusion because we don't want your blood levels to be low before you have a complicated yeah. surgery. Yeah. 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 And we'd recommend that your GP prescribes you that norethisterone. I've got it already. Continue I've got three now boxes. Until you have your surgery. Okay, okay. so from, from today Continue. onwards. Yeah, okay. because we don't want you to be bleeding and losing your blood before the surgery. Before the surgery, okay. Does that make sense? I've got three boxes at home at the moment. That's fine, and well, is, this the, 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 is this the drug that... The drug that stops, it's progesterone. Basically makes you as no. if you've had the menopause. No, 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 no that no. was Zolodax. This That's is the tablet the that stops, it's progesterone basically, stops you from having periods. Ah, so so it stops the bleeding. It's like a hormone. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That's fine. So that's what we'd recommend yeah. give that to you. They should be able to issue that without you having to see Yeah, no, it. I think I still got it on my prescription list anyway, so oh, I can order perfect. it today as well and get some extra. Um, I'm not going to go through the consent form today, even though I am going to list you for the surgery today. The reason for that is the waiting list is probably around about April. Oh, that's wow. the thing. And if I do the consent form now, who knows, you might want to go through all those questions again. It's, it's, more, it's better that we get a doctor to do that with you closer to the time. And yeah. we'll see you before yeah. then to go through yeah. everything before you're yeah. to make sure that the everything's ready before then. Okay. Does that make and sense? And is April the earliest time? Sometimes there's cancellations and they call earlier. And with yeah. this consultant's clinic, he manages his lists himself. So when it, if there is an opportunity, it will happen. I mean, obviously yeah. she'd be keen for it to be sooner yeah. than <laughs> <Where? later. laughs> Whatever this space is, and I know, be like, I can't, it's too, yeah. this is not in my hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I will list you for the surgery today, and we won't need to see you again. We have to just list you straight away and go straight forward with the yeah. surgery. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And your name Thank again you. is? Sajita. 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 I've got it, yeah. Um, you. Anything you want to ask? Anything? No, I'm just pleased, even just hearing the fact that you're option is surgery instead of going through a hysteroscopy is a zillion times more. No, no, we don't, no, I don't know what we're going to gain from that. And yeah. trying to remove a complicated fibroid vaginally when it's bleeding is it's not the safe option for yeah. you to do. We yeah. need to be able to see and try a different approach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, the thing is it's posterior, so it's at the back of the uterus. Yeah. So it's very difficult to access that. And it looks like from the hysteroscopy you were bleeding just when they were trying to get to it. So that's yeah. not safe for you. Yeah. Um, this is we'll be able to see. That so works. April and or earlier if we're lucky, yeah. and then uh, in hospital for how long? Yeah, so, so is that recovery the is actually quite similar to the cesarean section. Is that three days in hospital, six weeks recovery? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty up to date with that part. <laughs> it might be that, a bit more that. complicated um, okay. in terms of getting access because you had two surgeries before. 
But these are on gynecologists. So these they've done, yeah, they've done it. So. Will you be in the surgery with him? No way we know who's he's going to be until oh, okay. we know the date. Oh, okay. Sense. Do you know how long before I get a call to confirm or a letter to it confirm a date? It should be roughly about a month before that we call you for your pre-assessment. Yeah. And we call you for your pre-assessment a little bit early to make sure that we're happy with your blood levels, we've got all your swabs, everything done, and yeah. so that on the day there aren't any delays. Okay. And yeah. then from that day so I'll kind of know exactly. what exact Cause day... Exactly. Because you have blood done again yeah, the day, bef day uh -huh. of or the day before your operation as well, just to... Probably the pre-op, they, they, they do a blood test, eight yeah. couple of days, because we need to have valid blood match to be yeah. Yeah. consistent. I remember all of that from McAvoy's, yeah. <laughs> having the pre-op. I had mine oh. months before the operation. Before? Oh. Yeah, right. the pre-op. I had it, I think, three, four months before. Uh, ours will be a bit closer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so my open my mech to me sometime in April. Yeah, what you might want to do is probably in a couple of weeks see if you can get through to Mr. Das, D A S, Mr. Das, secretary, okay. and ask has my does my operation have a date? Because sometimes with his, you've got a date. The date is confirmed earlier than you find out. Okay. So just do see if that helps you. Have the I think I actually have a secretary's number, but I don't know if I did. Do you have a secretary's just number? Just buy me. I think you just have to email them. Das, D A S. Yeah, that's the main yeah. thing. Is he Mr. Das or Dr. Das? Oh, well, he's probably poor. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, let's see if I've got any shortcuts here. Yeah, I think I've got any shortcuts here. No. So it's just the Guyney number, I think. What you do is you call the. Um, Main, secretary. main hospital, yeah. and then you ask them to put through to the guidance secretaries, um, and if they ask which one, you say Mr. Mr. Das. Das. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and so maybe give it. Give it a couple of weeks to a month, just because. So maybe with maybe you. after my next infusion, maybe twenty first of December around that time after my next well, infusion. Well, yeah, yeah. So about yeah. a month. Yeah, and you need to get that infusion. Okay, I'm yeah, gonna. So there's a if, so you know, um, <coughs> you're, I'll be writing that in your letter. Okay. You. They want you to be optimised before surgery. Mm. There's no use you having low blood levels before. I'll start the I um the iron the norepinephrine today. Yeah. Are you taking it oral iron? Yes, three times a day, and or maprazole twice a day. But you have okay. So you know, within two weeks of having an iron infusion, you should. Yes. Be yeah. I haven't taken any yet. And how many times are you taking the tablet? Three times a day. You don't need to take the tablet uh, three times a day. Evidence shows actually taking it 200 milligrams once a day. I think mine is 210. You all take, uh, which one are you taking? Ferris? Ferris, Fumarin. Yeah. That's 210. That's 210. And um, you don't need to take it three times a day, just take it once a day with orange juice. That's the same amount of body that your body oh, okay. the same amount as three times a day. I've been taking it. <laughs> that's only new evidence that's come out. Okay. Only new. Okay, so a second. year ago, I would have told you to take it three times a day. Okay, so I can take it once a day yeah. with orange juice. Those, the other two tablets just give me side effects. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. That's, that's a. I hate, I like injections, I hate tablets. tablets. You've got two kids, it's already a lot. And then you have the eye, the omeprazole in the morning. <laughs> the omeprazole oh, at night. Take, yeah, the omeprazole with it. Yeah, so, take that. in summary, we are going to, I'm going to write a letter to your GP, and I'm going to say that we recommend that you have the iron transfusion in December, yeah. that we have you on three times a day of the norepinephrine, and until you have your surgery, that we are going to do an open myomectomy for you, um, as soon as it's available for us. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, norepinephrine is not going to cause any issues for that long. No. <laughs> That's fine. The main thing, <coughs> the reason why we're doing that, we can't conceive in this time, yeah. um, is that we are trying to stop your bleeding until the surgery because okay. we don't want you to be losing this blood before you have before the surgery. Before your blood levels, yeah. you need to be in a healthy position. Yeah, before, before the operation. surgery. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. But he's all over it actually. He doesn't have any gaps. So if there's any cancellations, he, would, he doesn't use that for Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's lovely to meet you. All done. So just getting um, a vanilla latte. I've had. I'll explain everything once I get in the car. And so back home. I've just picked up the girls. I've had a shower. They're just having their shower. What a long day. What a long day. So, um, 
it was a good appointment, I think. It was a good appointment. We managed to get a good outcome. So basically I spoke to wonderful na a wonderful doctor, junior doctor, sorry. Very lovely lady. She was actually amazing. Very sympathetic. She actually it, it was a good conversation. She understood what, where I was coming from and how long this stuff has taken and the fact that with the iron issue because obviously I had my iron but when I showed her my obviously test results because I had them on my phone on the app she was a bit appalled and shocked that I didn't end up having a transfusion first but you know it is what it is so we've come up with a plan she ended up speaking to the consultant and he asked her to do an exam so she did her exam uh, it's very painful I don't enjoy those exams so they just wanted to check that my uterus was um, flexible so it can be moved, it's not hard, it's positioned correctly. So she did the check and it came back good. Uh, my uterus is positioned okay. Um, it's flexible, it's not hard, it's, it's easily moved and whatever. Um, they have come up with, instead of doing the stent like what Dr. Microfoy said, they might do a stent and then it might be a keyhole. They've decided to go with an open myomectomy, and I'm so pleased because I was dreading having a stent and then going back and then having the stent checked and constantly and then having it removed before during you know just it was a process. It was just a process that I was not looking forward to. I was actually going to say no to the stent, but obviously they've scrapped the stent and I'm having an open myomectomy, and she's booking me in today for the open myomectomy. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a waiting list, so she said it could be until from now until April. So anytime I could get a, a letter saying this is when I'm having my pre-op, and then from pre-op it's only a month away, then you have your surgery, which is pretty good. Which is pretty good, you know. I'm. I was. That's. I was. I went in kind of thinking the worst, so I don't feel disappointed if I don't get what I'm looking for or I don't get the right result. And actually, I'm actually pleasantly surprised and I'm happy because I'm anemic. They've asked me to go on norethisterone from the today. So I'm going to start it tomorrow, technically. I'm going to start it tomorrow because it's three times a day. And obviously I can't start it now because then I'll have a dose that's a bit wonky. So I'm going to go on norethisterone from now until my surgery date. So yeah. So guys, we've got a good outcome and I'm happy with the outcome hopefully the surgical date won't be too far off obviously i will take you with me on the surgery date because gosh it's been so long from 2020 to 2022 hopefully beginning of 2023 i'll have a, be having this fibroid removed and that will be the end of this horrible journey to get this fibroid resected so fingers crossed it's sooner than April but if it is April you know at the end of the day I want this done for my health for my future TTC plans I need it out and I'm happy they've picked to do an open myomectomy because that was what I was going for and I'm so pleased and I'm okay because I can still take the norethisteroid I'm not it gives the side effects aren't that bad but it gets me to where I need to be, I'm okay with it. Of my day at St. George's Hospital and getting the outcome I wanted. Thanks for watching. See you next time.